Well, viewers, we're going to have a little fun with this video today. Grab your favorite beverage and keep it handy for the next several minutes because today's drinking game is going to be how many times I say in the original because Metal Gear Acid 2 is that type of sequel. However, I will say that Kojima Productions did manage to improve the gameplay quite a bit because the biggest problem in the original was the card system had provided an incredibly dense experience for the player with all the turns moving slowly, having nine different participants, and waiting three minutes in between large brawls just to get back around to having your turn and deal with some of the assholes shooting you. The sequel fixed a lot of the original, cut down the time between actions to where pressing the fast forward button suddenly has every enemy moving at light speed, cut down the relevant arena so that enemies two rooms over don't have visible turns and waste screen time, and the graphics have been cleaned with cell shade. The game expanded the number of cards it offers in a couple new playstyles integrated, yet keeps the same organic gameplay from the original. I think the trap cards are bloody useless due to the erratic enemy behavior, but some nut bar elsewhere might find them useful sort of thing. The game also triples everyone's health for some reason, which doesn't change anything other than turning Snake and Venus into walking tanks. So with all these fixes that the original sorely needed, I would say that I'm impressed if Kojima Productions didn't sacrifice everything else to make it happen. The scripting and scenario of this game are a mess. It feels like it was written by someone who knew that the original existed and might have played through all of it at some point, but then misinterpreted the entire experience and replaced actual effort with controls C and V if you get my drift. The main strength in the original was the mystery that it played up through its 20 hour run, where every person you met and every place you went was suspect since number 16 could manipulate anyone they want and for any reason with all the characters flipping sides. And the mystery worked in the original because every twist recontextualized the mission and directly affected the player characters into more danger. In MGA2, the grand mystery, the thing that gets strung along for the comparatively small 12 hours, relates to the backstory of Saint Logic. The story centers on an incident that everyone knows about from three years ago related to Lucinda, the researcher dealing with the test subjects you meet throughout the game and we're trying to shut down Copplethorne, the guy who felt betrayed enough by the incident, enough to launch hydrogen bombs at people he doesn't like. The reason this mystery falls flat every time it's brought up is that recontextualizing the backstory of any character changes nothing about what's happening in Saint Logic. Snake could have been a Philadelphia ice cream trucker and it still wouldn't have mattered because even if he was, Copplethorne would still be driving Chayoth Hakadesh, Venus would still be helping him, and Snake would still be fighting against the nuclear threat. No one gives a two cent shit about who Snake was, and the biggest sign of the story's total failure is that the writers decided it'd be a great idea to give Snake amnesia. Let me tell you something, in every single Metal Gear game, including in the original, Solid Snake or Big Boss is sent into the facility they're infiltrated with no information except the prime mission objective. It's the people and the enemies he meets in those facilities that fill in the blanks. So giving Snake amnesia is completely pointless. You can say that it explains why Snake doesn't know his group of friends at the beginning of the game, but the player doesn't know who these three cock rocks are, so it adds literally nothing to the narrative to remove this information. The move is as impactful if Nintendo decided to give Link amnesia. It never works. Again, I will give MGA2 some points for the ending, which similar to the original is its best point, because the story actually reveals that Snake was a result of Lucinda's projects, and that Snake is actually a clone of Solid Snake who had died on Lobito Island, and for some reason the game decided to add in this massive plot hole right at the end. It doesn't add a ton, but at least it's substantial that Snake is a clone and that Lucy shares two personalities and straight up murders Cobblethorn. Now we come to the fun part of this video. We're gonna have the misogyny talk. I'm sure that most would consider that the point Kojima drove straight for the addition of meaningless sex to his games was MGS4, and I can't blame them because that was the infamous one for its war beast bosses. But it turns out that we dove down earlier than you'd think in 2006 with this game, where it had crowbarring and jiggle physics for its two female characters. Your ally character Venus is programmed to have the camera swing around her in perfect angles to show off her tits every time she shoots a gun, and in all her 
conversations, her default stance has her putting an arm shelf under her boobs. The worst part is that someone on the design team also gave her an animation whose only purpose is to highlight the jiggle physics because it looks absolutely retarded. She stands there, looks down at her heeled boots, and then hops three times, and this wouldn't be so bad if it was something in the background of cutscenes while other people were talking, but she also does this stupid hopping in the serious parts of this game. Venus's boobs actually reminded me of the quiet figurine that caused controversy before Phantom Pain came out, whose boobs were actually separate to her actual body, because Venus's tits actually act like she filled her bra with jello this morning. It's one thing to have jiggle physics in your game, but it's another one to have it badly programmed. Then Kojima Productions went the extra mile to be sexist with its other female character, Dr. Takayama, an NPC researcher whose only other character trait is being scared of everything. Which is fair, considering the life or death stakes in this game. I mean, when we first met Gary in the original, he did the exact same thing. But her other trait is to simply stand quietly and ooze sex appeal because Dr. Takayama is a textbook example of a character type copied straight from Japanese hentai. I don't know what it's called specifically specifically, but she's the common sexy nerd with glasses. There she is, standing in her scaredy heels, wearing a shirt which she half replaced with puka shell necklaces. What the f is with this design? With how much she benefits from the jiggle physics, I can't imagine any situation where her tits would be remaining in her shirt with how out of control they are. In the context of this game, Dr. Takayama actually goes to work looking like this. What the actual fuck? If you want to make porn, just go make porn. I don't need it in a Metal Gear game, for God's sakes. Metal Gear Acid 2 is a game developed by the same team that did the original and simply wanted to make the original again, yet somehow having no idea of what it made it good in the first place. Improving the card system only helps a little bit because no player is here to deal with the security people through them. It's all about the story which the team copied wholesale and palette swap from the original and also completely fucked it up by not understanding that a mystery is only interesting to solve when the answer at the end directly affects the player because no amount of senseless murder Snake committed in the past has bearing on what's happening in Saint Logic. It's a story right on par with the lackluster MGS2, but that game had cool puzzles and stuff to break up the action. This one only has pointless boss battles adding nothing to the game besides contextless challenge, with some being literal copy-paste from the Metal Gear Ass's rogues gallery. It boils down to a game that threw out all its effort trying to copy the original success and spending its development time saved coding comedic devices into a game trying to be serious, whose all-important twists end up falling flatter than Lucy, who I'm actually surprised they didn't end up being a 17-year-old girl just so they could get the most money out of the jiggle physics. Just pick up the original game which actually knew what it was trying to do. Well, viewers, after that, it seems like that we've run out of Metal Gear games to play from my laundry list. So I'll let the next game we're going to review actually end up being a surprise for you. But until then, here's a scoreboard. And a final victory for gamers. Have a nice day.